Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and it's been a long time since I've done an episode of my car, so I figured we would go ahead and do one today because I just came out of the comic store. It's Thursday morning, and I picked up a copy of Phage, Extreme Carnage Phage number one. So we are going to get into spoilers, so if you haven't read this yet, you know, be sure to turn away now and come back after you've read it. And for those who want to read a copy of this or get a chance to, there's the digital code First person to put that code in gets the comic. It's a one-time use code only, so good luck. And if you do get the comic, let me know down below that you got it and let me know your review as well. Okay, so phage number one, extreme phage number one. Uh, this is written by Steve Orlando, and it's art uh, has art by Gerardo Sandoval, who did uh, way back when we first started the Venom vlog. Actually, I just re recently rewatched the first episode just for the the memories, I guess. And uh, and in it, I talked about Gerardo Sandoval, who do the uh, he did the first couple issues of the uh, Mike Costa run, and I was giving out the digital codes for that. So here I am now, almost four years later, giving out a digital code for another comic that he drew. And the artwork is good. I like Gerardo's work. Um, I like uh, Sandoval, what he does on these, uh, with his art, it's very sketchy and scratchy looking, but I think it works, especially for stuff like symbiotes. So I'm actually really digging this style. Uh, but uh, this book here is uh, interesting because I felt like the screen book was a little bit of a departure of the main story. It felt like, like it certainly felt like it still existed in the same world and it still followed a few things that were set up in the alpha issue. But then it felt like uh, they were kind of trying to do their own thing and, and you know the creative team on that book was like hey remember we did a screen book you know and we, we, we haven't forgot our story and so they kind of kind of squeeze some of that in which I guess makes sense Andy still would be on the quest to look for Demogoblin so it makes sense but in this one I, I it started off with uh, this hunter and his dog and they're basically you know just hunting for stuff in the woods and I was like okay so they're just that's what this is going to be it's going to be a bunch of one shots where they focus on where these symbiotes are and they're not going to tie in I was surprised that after like the first four pages the the dog itself you find out is actually phage in disguise or it's like bonded to the dog and then it's kind of keeping itself hidden from its owner and it just wants a simple life it just wants to hunt uh because that's what phage is right it's like it wants to uh consume and things like that so uh so i kind of like that it's now going back to basics and trying to have a one-track mind but it found a human that it likes and they just hang out in the woods and you know they're just friends and stuff and then all of a sudden uh, prof or what is his name? Uh, Senator Crane. I almost called him Doctor Crane because uh, that's uh, the Scarecrow, obviously. But um, but we have Senator Crane who is uh, who is on TV giving his speech from with the Friends Humanity, and this guy is watching it on his couch, and he's like, Ah, man, I'm looking for the sports game. Like, why is yeah, I'm looking for sports ball? Why is this on? And uh, and then the message that Crane is speaking, even though he's speaking. English to humans and all humans hear him um, as speaking English, but symbiotes hear a, a hidden message in his words, uh, like Andy did in the last issue and Phage does in this issue. So it drives Phage insane, essentially, or lets Carnage get a hold over Phage or influence Phage, and then Phage turns into a rabid uh, symbiote dog and kills his owner. Um, so yeah, so that's when it opened like that, I was like, okay, so we're gonna follow the adventure of this dog. But then right after, we go right back to Andy, and she's in the alley fighting the guardsmen, and we find out that only one guardsman did die, and that one of the other guardsmen is the, the toxin's father, uh, because he's like, yeah, I'm trying to do this for my son. She's like, you know, you're just, you're just collecting a paycheck, and he's like, no, I'm doing this for my son. I don't want him to grow up in a world where he could be possessed by alien symbiotes. And he's like, so that's why I signed up for the Guardsman program. So we find out that this is actually all, actually is tying together. Uh, so I'm very happy with that. And I called him Dr. Dan in the last episode, but it's actually Dr. Steven. And Dr. Steven shows up and we get a look inside Alchemex and answering all the questions I had. Because remember, Alchemex and Liz Allen helped out during King and Black where they gave Black Cat uh, like an anti-venom symbiote, one that they made, much like the one they made before uh, that they gave to Flash Thompson in uh, in uh, Venom Inc., I think it was. And we'll get to that story at some point soon. But, uh, but so all that, I was like, wow, they're actually tying all that together. And they have uh, Liz Allen is saying, or th there's a quote in here that uh, Dr. Steven says that he's trying to, he's one of the good guys. He He's worked with people with symbiotes before, so he's trying to help them. Whereas Alchemex handed the, the kind of control over this operation to a different guy, uh, and he's in charge of the new operation. So Liz isn't hands-on on this. So, because I was wondering like, why is Alchemex doing this? Liz is a good person and Dr. Steven's a good person. Why, you know, why is this happening? I mean, although Liz had a little bit of a shady side, but it was more like business shady, not like, you know, like really evil shady, I thought. And so, uh, so he answers that here. Dr. Steven is like, no, 
Liz put you in charge of the program, but I'm the expert here. I've worked with these things before. At least I'm the only one that's in this building that has. So you're going to have, you know, if you want answers, you're going to have to let me help out because what they have is Andy has been arrested now and she's in a cell uh, and she can't break out. Even though she has the hell mark, somehow she still isn't strong enough to ba uh, break out. But her symbiote was pretty much fried. But there was slivers of it enough for Dr. Stephen to salvage. So we find out that he actually did save the life of the Scream symbiote. So that's good to know. I'm sure a lot of Scream fans out there are very excited for that. Uh, then what I thought was really cool was the guy who got eaten by the phage dog at the beginning, he shows up to go question Andy. And, uh, and when he gets in there, you find out that he's not himself, obviously, because I was like, wait a minute, didn't that guy die? But yeah, well, he's phage now. Uh, phage has consumed his body and has become like a carnage phage hybrid uh, with spikes and everything. And so he's coming to fight Andy. And uh, luckily, coincidentally, some guy stole a phone and is running by Flash and Flash webs him and pulls the guy back. And uh, turns out that guy, uh, when, when Flash, you know, stops him from, because someone's like, hey, he stole my phone. So Flash webs him and then the guy falls to the ground. Flash picks up the phone and on the phone, a news broadcast is playing and I'm like, how convenient. Like they couldn't have done that any other way. So I thought that that was kind of silly and goofy. Um, but Flash sees on the news that Andy has been captured and uh, you know Senator Crane is saying like, yeah, this poor young lady, we're gonna separate the suit from her. Don't worry, she's not gonna be harmed. Um, and then we're gonna, you know, of course, which is probably all BS. And so, uh, but thankfully Dr. Steven is there to try to keep an eye on her to make sure she doesn't get hurt. But once Flash sees that, he's like, okay, I'm going to Alchemex. So he breaks into Alchemex, runs into Dr. Steven, and is like, what's going on? And Dr. Steven's like, look, I'm trying to help out, but I'm, I'm outnumbered here. And he's like, so I'm doing my best. The Scream symbiote's still alive, and uh, and but Andy's you know held in another room. And then right when that happens, the alarm goes off because Phage slash Carnage slash Hunter guy is now attacking Andy, and, uh, and Andy and him are in a big fight. Uh, and so that's when... Flash intervenes as Agent Venom, um, or Agent Anti-Venom. He intervenes and he tries to help out, but big spoilers here, like I said, I gave a spoiler warning earlier, something even more drastic happens. In the last issue, we thought the Scream symbiote was burned away for good. Turns out it's not, uh, you know, it's still chance of it living. But now Andy has been killed by Phage. Uh, Andy's been stabbed right through the chest uh, by Phage, right in front of uh, Flash, who's like, trying to come back to save her because he's like you know and now that he's back in the world he's like i gotta go you know i i just wish it was him on his own going where's andy like him doing some research or asking tony stark like hey i'm trying to look for andy my friend you know any sign of her on your radars or something and then tony could have been like oh crap she's been captured she's at alchemex do you want my help and maybe flash like no i'm going right now um so maybe that could have they could have added a, a page or two of that instead of him just webbing a guy and seeing it on his phone i thought that was a little lazy and clearly done for you know, to condense the pages and stuff. Whereas the beginning with the dog and the hunting stuff, that could have been probably, could have trimmed a page or two off of that and then did the Flash Iron Man thing later. Um, but other than that, I don't have a ton of criticisms uh, negatively about this because this is re recoursing it. Um, so I like that. Like this is getting the book back on course to a, a cohesive story because the scream issue it's not that it departed that much but it just felt a little disconnected and i know some of you felt the same way when reading it so and i did too um but in this one i felt like this kind of righted the ship and it's pulling back into the story so i can't wait to see where they go next i think the next issue for this is lasher and that comes out on august 4th so definitely that week uh, or the week after i will have my review up for that book and we'll give out the digital code for uh, lasher when that drops as well so yeah we're almost halfway through this event I think there's like seven books in the event something like that so we're you know three issues in uh, and I'm I'm digging it it's okay I, it still doesn't answer the question why Eddie Brock doesn't just wrap this up in one page uh, but maybe now that this answered some questions I had from the last issue maybe we'll get those answers coming up uh, that would be that would be nice I would like to see that uh, but you let me know what your thoughts are down below if you read this book and if you haven't, you know, sorry about all the spoilers. I, I try to warn you. Uh, but if you didn't care about spoilers, you know, and you have some thoughts too, or you have questions about this book, let it be known down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.